What up, what up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Modai J and we're locked in. This is the recap for episode two of Ghost Season 4. Man, Tariq, he's running around the city. It was getting a little ugly for him. We still got eight episodes left. But right now, this is going to be an uphill battle for Tariq. And let me tell you, Effie's trying to get on his good side. Diana got some damaging information. Monet is still trying to figure out who shot her. Kane, he wants Tariq's blood. So at this point, it's all bad for Tariq. His back is against the wall. But before we jump into this and we do the recap for episode two, if you like recaps, breakdowns, theories, and predictions, live after show discussions, then hit your subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Make sure you hit that like button. I'm on that road to 50,000 subscribers. We need about 1,200. So let's try to make that push by the end of June. Listen, Tariq, he's got to finish school. And in episode two, he's back on campus and it's a new semester. Let's jump into it. This is the recap of episode two, Ghost. Starting the episode off with Don Carter, who's out to avenge the death of Agent Young via Paz because she told him about Tariq St. Patrick. They're at the docks at a Russian bus. Now, I don't know how they're doing this. Is this the same bus that Congressman Tate had put in that he got from Tariq or what? But the other agents on this task force, they say, here's Tariq St. Patrick. He was involved in this RICO that went to shits. So they're asking Don, do you want us to go out and get in the streets and try to piece things together? He said, no, oh, this Tariq guy, let me handle this. And this is because he has a personal vendetta because of what he got from Paz when she said Tariq might be involved in this. We start to get more of the story of what's been going on with Braden and Tariq. Tariq is enrolling back into school. Braden, we know that he was not allowed here because he got kicked out of school for selling drugs. He's into real estate with another family member. The Westons, they're deep. Also, we see that the Westons name is being pulled off the library. Now, Tariq and Braden are trying to figure out what's next because Tariq hasn't been on campus in a while. And people are looking at Tariq and they're calling him a hero. They also want to get them on a podcast to see if these conspiracies come together and try to piece it together. But they're like, nah, we're not doing this. Also, we see people harassing Braden saying, hey, F you, our parents lost money because of what your family did. So people are harassing Braden about what went on in Weston Holdings. He's like, I'm only 20 years old. But as him and Tariq walk off, they can't sell no product. They can't get back in the game. No more won't allow any of it. And she will put a bullet in them if they try. But if you remember in episode one, they were both talking when they were in the car about how life would be if they could just go off and be college students and live a normal life. Well, that's where they're at at this point. Neither one of them are in the game, so they have to go to figuring things out. Braden, real estate, Tariq, he needs to go on campus and get a job. Once Tariq gets on campus, he ends up getting a job through the counselor. He's going to be working at the candy shop. He's going to be folding clothes. He's going to be doing anything that they need on the campus. They gave him three jobs, $11 an hour. So for him, he's going to have to do this because he needs financial aid, his student loans, Everything is going into the crumbler because, hey, Tariq has been messing up if we're just being honest. And James St. Patrick, we know he's probably somewhere watching. Like, nah, make it as tough as possible on Tariq. There's been a lot of speculation about Diana, and we do see her at the store going down the pharmacy aisle, and she is picking up a pregnancy test. Now, this is the first response, and I'm hearing that these are probably some of the best ones you want to go with over the clear blue. Don't ask me how I know, that's just what word is on the street. Now she's picking this up because she's worried that she might be carrying. We also see Effie on campus trying to apply to get into Stanford. Now this has always been her dream and she's been telling Tariq this for a while. And luckily for her, there's one interview spot left and the professor is like, you should go ahead and apply for that Effie. It's a little expensive, but it's an investment into your future. So Effie's looking at it thinking, this is one way for me to get away from New York City and I can go start my new life after I play Kane and Tariq. We finally get to see Monet out of the hospital and she's in here getting her P90X workout on because she has to do physical therapy. She just got shot up and this road to recovery is going to be a tough one. We get introduced to her cousin Janet and they're just talking about when they were younger and growing up and how Monet wanted to be just like Janet until she didn't. We know that at some point in life, Monet went down a different path and she got into the dope game, got involved with Mecca, got involved with 
Lorenzo, and here we are now shot up because these are the consequences of your life. Now, Monet being out of the hospital is good for her, but it's bad for these Tahati kids because they were the ones that were trying to get her up and out of the game. Noma is doing some research on her own and she's on the computer and see. Davis is still fighting for his livelihood and getting his license back to practice law, but the bar has him suspended. So he has one of his associates that work up under him come and represent him. And the reason for it is because, well, it's going to be cheaper and it's probably going to be free. It's going to be on the house because, you know, she works with Davis and associates. Now, she's looking over his case and she's saying it's not that bad of a case. She's seen worse, so he does have a chance. Now, Davis, on the other hand, we know that he's a ladies man and we've seen this from time after time in hell i think davis is still married well him and his associate they're looking at each other he takes his tank top off asking her does she like what he sees and she's like yeah she closes the door and instead of going over the case they go over to the bed and they do what adults do and they get it on the tahadas are having a family meeting now kane shows up and he's like hey janet can you get out of here so the intermediate family my and the kids we can talk Janet leaves, she's like, well, dang, I thought cousins were part of the family. But what they're in here talking about is who tried to unalive Monet. Now, Diana said it was Tariq, but then she changed her story. Kane is saying, we ain't trying hard enough because we ain't looking at Tariq. And Monet's like, well, why would Diana say it wasn't Tariq? Drew even says, well, she said it wasn't Tariq, Kane. But Kane knows that something is up and he's going with his gut instinct. But Monet is saying, y'all need to try harder, get back in the streets and find out who tried to unalive me, who put the 16 shots into that window and three into my side. Tariq, Diana, Effie and Bruce Andrea all have a new class together. Now, when they're in there, you know, it's a back and forth discussion. They're talking about who is fit to be a leader. Does it come from greed? Is it defeat that turns you into a better leader? But once they leave, we know that each class session is pretty much an overview of the episode. Effie comes up to Tariq and she's asking him, hey, are we good? Tariq's like, no, you told Noma. Now, of course, Effie, she's an opportunist and she says, I wasn't thinking at the moment when I turned in Anya to Noma, but you gotta forgive me. I told you that Kane was coming after you. So are we good, Tariq? Tariq looks at Effie and you can tell he's hurt, but he should have known because she's been telling on him since high school. He tells her, no, we're not good. And as he walks off, Effie's like, I need to talk to you, Diana. We need to talk one-on-one. -on -one. David shows up to his office, and inside of his office is Detective Don Carter. Now, we know that Davis just left his bar meeting to try to get reinstated. Don Carter is saying, listen, I have a proposition for you. If you give me some information to bring down some bad people in the streets, I know people in high places that can help you get your lawyer license back. Now, Davis is saying, you mean turning my clients? And Don is saying, well, if you want to look at it that way, yeah. We know that Davis has been solid since the first time we've seen him. Yeah, he does some backdoor plays, but what lawyer doesn't? He looks at Don Carter and says, listen, if you mess with my life, I'm going to mess your life up. Basically, giving him a middle finger and saying, I'm not cooperating with you against any of my clients. But this is just one person that Don is investigating. Effie pulls up on Diana at the candy shop so they can finally have this one-on-one -on -one conversation. And this conversation is straight up. Hey, I'm working for Noma. I'm trying to get more product. I'm trying to become the top dog. I'm trying to move this work. Now, Diana, on the other hand, she's at work. She's trying to figure out if she's pregnant or not. She ain't really hearing what Effie is talking about, but she knows that she has to cooperate because they all work for Noma. And Effie is saying, listen, Diana, you need to get focused. 
because working for Noma, you're either in the game or you're out the game. And when you're out the game, it's out the game by a bullet. As Monet continues on, we see her talk a little more with Janet and they start thinking about what the past had and if maybe Monet messed up with her kids or messed up by getting with Lorenzo. Now we have a flashback and we see little Lorenzo Tejada Jr. AKA Kane. He's in the high chair eating some Cheerios. It looks like they in the hood. Monet, a young Monet, she doing her thing. And then in comes Lorenzo. Now young Lorenzo, this is his early hustling days. And Monet's like, we need to get some bricks. We need to start moving that work so we can move up and out of these apartments into the Upper East Side, you know? Finally get a piece of that pie. Now Lorenzo was saying, no, nah, give me a second. I gotta prove myself before I just go in there and try to get that work. So it's kind of a little bit slower than how Monet wants to be moving because she wants to have a better life for her and her kids. But she also said that maybe messing with Lorenzo was a mistake. Now Effie's putting in the work. She went to Noma and got permission to get more of the pie, meaning she's putting in more work than anybody else. She wants to make more money. In order to do this, she tells Noma, I'm gonna go talk to the Russians. Noma said, you got 24 hours to go and do what Obi couldn't get done. Now when she shows up and she's talking to the Russians, she has a way in and she says, listen, I can get your daughter into college because I can hack stuff and you can trust me without me blackmailing you because I'm working directly for Noma. Now I'll change the scores and the speed that your daughter did when she was backstroking in that swimming pool and she'll get accepted. Now the Russians, they like, all right, if this is possible, we'll work with you, but only if it's possible. Braden comes to see Tariq on campus and of course, Tariq got several jobs. He's working at the candy shop and we got us a live concert I get so weak in the knees, I can hardly. You know what's going on. Now she's up there singing, but when she gets down, you know Braden, he loves him some chocolate. Now he goes over there and Bruchandria's hating self is there, talking about what are you doing here, Braden? Now everyone knows that Braden got suspended and kicked out of school for slanging that yayo. Now our singer is saying, well, you know, I need me a new connect because they moved away. So this might be a potential in for Braden and Tariq going into episode three of who they can supply. While Tariq is at work, the party is jumping. Don Carter comes in and he needs to talk directly to Tariq. Now he takes him out in the hallway and he's telling them straight up. I know who your father is, James St. Patrick, the biggest piece of sh in New York. I know who you are. You smell just like him. And that hero story you told about unaliving the person that took out Agent Young, I don't believe it one bit. I believe you took out Agent Young. Now, Tariq is playing it cool. And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about, sir. But if you can go get justice for him and his mother or whoever, then so be it. So as Tariq walks off, he think he played Don Carter. Don says, well, what about your mama Tasha? I heard she's in Whitsack. They're getting ready to get rid of her. So Tariq, he gets to thinking, like, wait a minute. They're gonna kick my mom out of Wissack? He said, yeah, and everybody in New York wants to get at your mom. Monet is up and out of the bed and she wants answers and she wants them now. So she pulls up to Noma's warehouse because Kane says she's in charge and knows what she's doing. And she pulls a gun. Noma pulls a gun on her. The Russians pull up with Effie. And right now, Monet's talking about this my city. You ain't gonna take over, Noma. The Russians are like, what the hell is Monet doing here? Is this a setup? So right now, guns are pulled on everybody. You look left, there's a gun in your face. You point your gun to the right. You look across the thing, there's a gun pointing at you. So every gun that you point at somebody, there's two guns pointing at you and I'm looking left and right. I get back in the vehicle. But the Russians say they not with Noma as long as Monet's around. Everyone stands down and as they stand down, it gets slow. And we see Monet pass out. While Monet is passed out, Effie's driving her to the house. She has another flashback and it's her and Janet in the car. They're talking, joking, and they end up getting pulled over. Now Monet is panicking. There's a gun in the glove department. Give me that. Janet's like, what are you doing? She puts the gun up under Lorenzo, baby Lorenzo, AKA Kane. The police show up and they're like, what's going on? She's saying, I got a, hung a hungry kid. I gotta go, I gotta go. So the police let her go. But when she gets home, Lorenzo, he shows up and he's like, what are you doing with our son? She's like, well, I wouldn't got these two bricks. He said, why are you moving this fast? I already told you, Mo, 
don't get our family involved in the dope game. So we see that Mo has been moving reckless since the young one. Tariq then pulls up on Tasha because of what he heard from Don Carter. Now when he gets here, Tasha, she's working at Shop Depot and she's supposed to be helping people out. But she's going to be getting thrown out of with sack because at this point, it's like there's really no more money. What happened with the Marshalls in season three, they not playing around with this nonsense. Now Tariq is telling his mom, I'm doing everything I can. I'm trying to figure it out. And Tasha's like, you'll get it, son. You'll get it. But out of nowhere, her supervisor shows up. And he's like, um, what are you doing here? She's like, oh, I'm just trying to help this guy. He said, I told you about bringing your personal life up to work. Now get your ass back to work. He didn't say it like that, but that's what he meant. So Tariq is looking like, what? He's talking to my mom like this? And when the supervisor leaves, he says, Ma, you ain't never let no one talk to you like this. This ain't how we supposed to be living. Tariq waits outside for the supervisor and well, he steps on his hand and he tells him, hey, you ain't gonna put your hands on her no more talking about his mama Tasha. And if you do, I'll send people to your house and I'll burn it down. So the supervisor's like, my bad, my bad. I won't do it, I won't do it again. Tariq is literally standing on business right now, standing on his hand. And as he walks off, Tariq turns around just to let him know that he ain't playing and kicks him in his gut. May potentially broke his ribs, but you know Tariq, he gonna stand up for Tasha. Effie misses her interview on campus to try to go to Stanford because she needs to meet up with the Russians because she was promising, Noma, I got 24 hours, I can get you more work. Now her and Kane, they show up and they tell the Russian, listen, we got guns, military grade, you won't find nowhere else, clean, trust me. If you take these, this is appreciation and gratitude from Noma. Now the Russian is looking at this and to get a free bundle of guns, now nah, you really can't turn that down, especially if you're in the game moving arms. But he says on one condition, I'm only gonna talk to Effie. I don't wanna talk to anyone else. I'll talk directly to Effie because I can trust her. And Effie gave him the paperwork showing that her daughter, the speeds from her swimming have been changed and she's good to go to get into Princeton. Earlier in the episode, Diana did find out that she was pregnant. Now. We need to figure out who the father is. She does go to the clinic to get any information that she can. And the doctor is even saying, do you know who the father is? Not being disrespectful, but just so you and the father can talk it out and work whatever situation you guys are going to do. Now, Diana, she's sitting here. She's all alone because at the house, Monet, she's apologizing to Drew because she feels like she may have messed the kid's life up. But right now, Diana went down that path and we already know what Lorenzo told her. And we know Monet did not want her messing with Tariq. And you guys all know this famous saying. I knew you was gonna let that nigga hit. Tariq, we raised you better than that, Diana. We end up seeing 2-Bit for a brief moment and he does have Tariq's car. Tariq's car broke down. Brayden picked him up from the diner. They talked about getting back in the dope game. But first things first, trying to get Tariq's car back. Now he did have a spare key. And for this one second, we seen 2-Bit became a vegan. He went in there to eat, Tariq got the car, and they drove off. Of course, you know 2-Bit is upset about this. Hopefully, we see him more, and this isn't the end of 2-Bit, and they don't write him off by him getting the car stolen from, <laughs> from himself by Tariq. Kane and Noma are starting to get closer to each other, and they make Obi leave while they handle this over some scotch. But when Obi leaves, he gets confronted by Don Carter, and of course, he's going to ask questions. Okay, how'd you get those green cards? Who expedited them? Who are you working with? Who are you? Now, Obi's not giving up any information because that's not what Obi does. But Don Carter, he don't care. So what does he do? Puts him in handcuffs and he takes him down for questioning. Episode three, we're going to see if Obi going to stand strong or he going to fold. And the last thing we see is Monet meeting up with Tariq. Now, they both got guns. They both got a little trust and respect for each other. But you still have to be on your P's and Q's when you're in the dope game. Now, Monet gets straight to it. She don't know if she can trust the kids, and she needs to know who shot at her. Now, she's asking Tariq, does he know? And Tariq says, I didn't do it. And she's like, well, what makes you believe that I wouldn't go at your mom? He said, well, because Kate Egan told Tommy Egan. And she's like, who the hell is Kate Egan? You remember, Diana was the one that went over to the house. So Monet really doesn't know who is who. And we're watching Tariq think this out. Wait a minute. You don't know who Kate is. 
So you couldn't have gave him the address to where my mom was. Hmm. Who did it? But no one trusts anyone, especially a Tejada. All right, there you go. The recap for episode two of Ghost. Let me know what you think about this. Is Obi going to fold and tell Don Carter any information? And also, is Tariq prepared for what's coming next if Monet is to say, hey, Tariq, I need you to ride with me and take these kids out. Let me know what you think. My name is Mo IJ. If I said something to make you think or you just like power content, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. We're on the road to 50,000 subscribers. It's been about six years I've been doing this. And let me tell you, I appreciate every moment of it. So thanks for watching. I'm out.